Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel and welcome to the first official garden tour of 2020. So I have everything all planted and every single solitary space utilized. So let me turn you around and show you what I've done. Where to start, where to start, where to start. I'm going to start here by my mint. Look at how this is filled out. Now this is um, under my big ash tree. And uh, it has just grown up so much and fortunately it is confined by this bed and I just mow over it if it gets out of here. Um, this is chocolate mint. If you've never smelled chocolate mint you need to grow some. I know I said that before. So I love, absolutely love, love, love this mint bed. Next up is these flower pots that I have. I have calendula in the back. This is called Nigella Persian Jewels. This is Rudbeckia. And these are bachelor buttons here. And then over in this pot, I just have some annual flowers. And this grass is called bunny grass. It gets little poofies on the end of it, like bunny tails. Right next to that is this little raised bed that I have that was gifted to me by some really sweet person. Um, I've got lettuce in here. I have picked some of this lettuce and the rest of this is ready to be picked. And then I have some bunching onions here. Here I have lemon verbena, another one of my favorite herbs to grow. but. Unfortunately, they're really hard to start from seed. So I was fortunate enough to have my girlfriend pick this up for me. Uh, there's a place around here that grows it or has it. And then in this pot, what's in here? Oh, grandiflora is a flower. And then I have two containers of rosemary. And then if you walk over here to my in-ground garden, you can see my tomatoes are all doing really well. Now in your time, you've just seen me plant these. So they're, they have really grown. We got a really nice rainstorm last night, and I swear they've grown overnight. Next to my tomatoes is my cabbages. I still have the cages around them because the dogs are chasing squirrels and chipmunks through the garden, so it protects them. They're all doing really well. You can see they're just starting to the very, very beginnings of forming a head in the middle there. So they're doing really well. Next to my tomatoes are my cucumbers. I've got several different varieties here. These are those little cucumelons and they're just starting to grab a hold and start to climb. So they're all looking very well. They're all growing which is good. I threw in some marigolds in there. More cucumber, cucumbers. This one is having issues. wonder what's going on there. And then on the end here is my sun gold tomato. Right next to that in these pots, these are beans I started in March. These are beans I put in the ground. I think I put them in the ground mid-May. So 
so they're a little bit behind I can see and because I don't get to pick which ones are the best I mean the germination on these was terrible and you can see here the proof of that potatoes are all doing really well These short ones here are blue potatoes, and then these two are the white potatoes. Over on this side of the trellis, this is my trellis that goes up and over here, are my sugar snap peas. And you can see we are getting the first flowers of the sugar snap peas. Right next to the sugar snap peas are the pole beans. We've got two different kinds of pole beans. This is just like a regular um, snap bean, uh, but more of like a French style Harcovert style bean. And then these ones are my yard long beans. And because I had two holes in the fabric, I put a cantaloupe there and a cantaloupe there. And then next to my beans, these are jester squash. Now you can see the difference between these, these two, and this is also a jester squash. But this one was planted about a week and a half after those so you can see the difference they're both seeded at the same time but they were planted at different times and then next to my squash and the beans are my peppers and if you watched oh, someone's been digging in here that's not good. I'll have to fill that up. Can't be doing that. So if you watched my pepper video when I planted them, I topped off some of the peppers. I have two, a set of each different variety. And one of them I left as it was, and one of them I topped. And can you see, like this is new growth, this is new growth, this is new growth here. It's amazing how fast those shoots formed to make the plant bushier. It'll be really fascinating. Like, look at this one. It's got all this new growth in here. That is pretty cool. Right next to my in-ground, I'm sorry, my raised bed garden, I have zucchinis. And I've got three or four different varieties, four I think. This is Green Machine. This is called Spineless Perfection. Same with that. And then down here, I've got a bush zucchini. Actually two of them. We'll see how they like those spots. The rhubarb really likes that spot, so I would think the zucchini should like it. I've already had one picking of the rhubarb. I forgot to mention this pot. These are onions that were overwintered and they were sprouting, so I just threw them in a pot and I'll let them go. And you can see they are forming flowers and seeds. Um, just so you know, uh, onions are biennial which means that they will seed on the second year. So since these were grown last year, this year they will form seed heads. Here's my flowers. I always put flowers in this bucket. And they're all looking lovely. These are Roma tomatoes. I just wanted a few extra Roma tomatoes because I want to do a lot of canning this year. This is 
bok choy on the outside and they're just not growing. I think I am done growing bok choy because it just doesn't grow the way I want it to grow. And then I threw some cantaloupe in there, middle. Onions, onions, and these are dwarf sugar snap peas. These were planted about two weeks before these ones. So all I did was make this little teepee. You could see I tied it up at the top and they'll have something to climb up and they are just starting to make their climb. Here in my raised beds, this is my herb bed. I've got something that's digging in here. But I've got some, this looks like oregano, but I didn't plant oregano here. This is creeping thyme, that's what that is. It's got a much bigger leaf than the regular thyme. Can you see that? This is thyme also. Chamomile, chamomile. This is fennel, the kind that doesn't bulb. This is oregano that survived the winter. Isn't it beautiful? I just love how beautiful that is. Parsley down the middle. And then cilantro. And then these are all different kinds of basil that I'm growing. Basil is one of my favorite herbs to grow. In this bed here, this is my four foot by four foot bed. Um, I've got some marigolds that I started from seed along here. These are Nicotiana here. And then in the back, I've got zinnias planted all along the back. And then those are nasturtium in each corner. This raised bed here has fennel. I've got four rows of fennel. And I don't know where this came from. Four rows of fennel. This is the bulbing kind of fennel. Here I have some kohlrabi. And over here I have celery. And I don't know what this is, but it keeps coming up. I keep pulling it and it keeps coming back up. I'm thinking it's something that the birds put there from the bird seed. Over here, I have my tarragon. Now, tarragon is hardy for this zone, very hardy. I'm guessing it'll probably go down to zone three or less. Um, I'm zone 5A here, but it's just so beautiful. I just can't pull it out. I do contain it. I, it'll try to creep out, and I pull anything that tries to creep out. Another thing that's a perennial here is my sage. Comes back every year like a champ. And then I put some hyssop in here. There, there and then some parsley, curly leaf and flat leaf parsley. They will probably all get taken up by the pumpkins. These are all pumpkins here. And then over in the corner, I've got some summer savory. I'm thinking of putting in some kind of trellis for these pumpkins, but I haven't quite figured out how I'm gonna do that. Also in this bed is yarrow. The older stuff is starting to get flower heads. Ellie, get out of the garden. The older stuff is starting to get flowers on it. This is the same age as that one. And then this one is a year old, younger here. I've got more yarrow over here. Yarrow, 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 yarrow. 
and chives. I may have to move those chives because they are just kind of getting swallowed by the yarrow here. The big, I don't know if you want to call it problem or star of the garden, is this elecampane. I never knew it would get this big. Oh, this is just kind of hysterical. So I'm interested to see if it'll put flowers on this year because it's supposed to have really pretty flowers. I will put a picture of the flower on the screen. And over here, I've got cantaloupes. And they are really kind of getting crowded out here. And then I have watermelon, watermelon. Now over here in this corner, I have a cantaloupe planted in here and then this stuff has come up and I am thinking that this is a delicata squash from last year. I'm just going to let it go because I'm going to lose complete control of this garden anyway. I'm just going to let it go. It's going to be interesting. Over here in the back of the raised bed garden I've got squashes. These are butternut type squashes. One is a heirloom variety and one is a hybrid variety. More nasturtiums. I'm going to train these to go up the fence. These are watermelons here. My original watermelon that I planted here died. And so I put this one in and then this I had another one of these Congo watermelons. We'll see if it makes it or not. And then this one down here is like a sugar baby watermelon. And I've got dill planted there. Over here more watermelon watermelon and over there is a cantaloupe this is my 3 by 12 foot raised hi kitty cat he's enjoying being outside 3 by 12 foot raised covered bed this is completely in cut enclosed uh, spinach 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 these were started by winter sowing this one and this one and these ones were direct sown so you can kind of see the difference in the size i've already had a harvest of these and then over here by the kitty cat is carrots these have really grown in the last week because it's been really warm here. So over here I have radishes. And then I've got a new lot started in here. This is those plants called flower sprouts. They're supposed to be a combination between kale and Brussels sprouts. I don't know what they're going to be like. It's going to be weird. This is kale that I planted to use as baby kale. It's planted really close together. And then these kale I'm going to let get bigger. To have like, look at this beautiful curly leaves. Does that make you just want to eat them? It makes me want to eat them. Num num num. And they have good flavor. And then I had some extra lettuce plants that I just threw in there. In these pots back here in the back of my yard, I have milkweed in here. In this pot here I have milkweed. This stuff survived the winter and came back 
And then these are ones that I planted this year. I also threw in some other flowers that I had. I had extras when I planted all my pumpkins and squash. I had such good germination rates that everything grew. And so I have all these extra plants. This is a naked bear pumpkin. It is the pumpkin that you grow for the seeds. This is a Italian cantaloupe. Oh, uh, that's what I'm calling it anyway. And these are the Sugar Baby Water Mountains. So needless to say, this whole area will be covered in vines. But it gets really good sun during the day. And I am looking forward to whatever it gives me. I think this is the only spot I missed. These are ground cherries. Ground cherry, ground cherry. And I threw in a few marigolds that I grew from seed. Look at these cute little ones. I think marigolds are just so beautiful. I don't know why, but I just love them. So extra plants. I've got some extra cabbages in case one of these died, but they didn't. I've got extra watermelons and pumpkins. So I'm going to give some of these watermelons are going to my son and daughter-in-law. And then if you walk over here, this is all I have left. In here I have some chicory plants, some white sage, and some summer savory left over. These are pumpkins left over. These here are cosmos. Those will end up going in the garden someplace. These cotton plants, the purple ones, those are cotton. Those will be going in the garden someplace. Even if I put them in a pot, I'm gonna get them in here somehow. It's just I ran out of potting soil, so I couldn't do anything with the rest of these. So. All in all, not bad. I was able to have a friend who took the rest of the tomatoes off my hands. So that was good. Here is that morning glory that I planted not that long ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. It has wasted no time in taking off and climbing up this. It'll be up and over this trellis before you know it. And then I put some marigolds in between some of the cucumbers. Here, here. Because I had extra marigolds. So on this arch that leads from my patio to the backyard, I have two flowering vines. One is my clematis. And you can see, look at all the flowers. Let me see if I can get in there. Look at all the flowers. This is a white one here. And then my purple one. My oh my, isn't that beautiful? It really did well in this spot. So I've got a lot more flowers coming on. Look at all these flower buds. This is going to be beautiful this year. And this is only its second year. That's pretty good. So on this side of my trellis is a trumpet vine that I have growing up here. I thought it had died. I didn't realize it took so long to come back because it really looked like it was dead. So I'm really pleased that that has come back. It looks really nice. Can't wait to see what kind of flowers are on there. So I do believe that's it. Um, it only took like five minutes to walk around the garden and show you everything. <laughs> it took so long to plant. It just seems like it never ends. And now it's a matter of just kind of keeping up with everything. Keeping everything fertilized. Keeping everything watered. Um, We've been lucky here. We've gotten a few rainstorms. I know that England is really suffering from a rain shortage. And I hope you guys get rain really soon. Um, 
So if you'd like to follow along this garden, it's going to be really exciting to watch all this stuff grow and see how overrun everything gets. Um, things that are on trellises will be very controlled, but boy, that pumpkin and watermelon garden is going to be a little crazy this year. So if you're not already subscribed, click on that subscribe button and you can follow along with me all year long. Also, if you like what you saw here, don't forget to give me a thumbs up. And until next time, happy gardening, everybody. Bye-bye.